you know. <laughs> I know many of you come here because, you know, you probably think I'm happy on what happened last night. I'm not. I'm not happy. We just kept pointing these things out to you in the exhibition season and in the off season on what your team was going to look like. And everything that happened that I thought would happen, happened last night, as we always do. We start to show off with big sales, four hours of power with our friends at BetUS. We appreciate them, and we appreciate you. Um, I want to start this off by doing this. You know, in the last couple months of last year and going into this year, do you realize that the Philadelphia Eagles in the last 10 games are three and seven? Um, I mean, you're trending down. You're not trending up. That looked like 2023 to me yesterday. That was 2023. What's different? Oh, wait, your defense is worse. I, I know people are like, well, Vic Fan, no, Howie Roseman's fault. That football team was constructed poorly. The third and three was a horrible call, and I 1,000% disagree with John McMullen, and I'll tell you why. Do you realize... The position with a minute 34 left since 2016 that what the Falcons did last night had a 0.07 percentage chance of succeeding with the amount of yardage they had. What do you think that would have been if you had run the clock off more and gave them 57 seconds left in the game? There's a whole different play. and. Maybe Vic brings more pressure with less than a minute. Let me let's let's do something here as well. Folks, before we even get into my total takeaways here in the numbers, what is the one egregious thing that could not happen at the end of the game there for the Eagles when it was third and three? We're talking risk reward here. What was the number one thing that could not happen? Anybody? What was the one thing that could not happen? One thing that you could not have happen. Not the drop. There you go, Bruce. The clock stopping. CJ, the clock stoppage. Look. Do you know what running back has the most drops since he came into the league? It's Gardner. It's uh, Saquon Barkley. The risk reward in that moment doesn't constitute the play. Run the ball. Run the ball. Let's do something else, too. And by the way, that is on the head coach. Angelo Cataldi will be with us at 5:30 today. Okay? Look at look at look at C24. 10 and 1 is old news. In the last 10 games you've won 2. 2. 2. 2 games, dude. How about this one? At the end of the game, when Jalen Hurts threw that pass down the sidelines for an interception, what would Tom Brady have done? He would have got the 15, 16 yards and gave Adam Vinatieri an opportunity at kicking a game winner like he did in the Super Bowl versus the Rams, right? 
Why are you throwing the foot? Do you know what? Here's a stat for you. Xander, how about this one? How about this one here? Do you understand that what they did last night, Jalen Hurts did not have a completed pass of 20 or more yards the entire night because of A.J. Brown. It's third and three. Hey, Xander, can you throw that super chat down, please? I appreciate it. Thank you. It's third and three. Run the ball. That's 40 seconds off the clock. Absolutely. It's egregious. By the way, I said this on the postgame show last night. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous of a call. Ridiculous of a call. We did it on the postgame show last night. I completely disagreed with John. And you don't have your playmaker. By the way, I have never seen a football team fall to pieces when you have one player off your football team. One player off your football team. Xander, I missed the super chat. Less than two minutes with the lead. Eagles are four and seven. I got a stat on that one too a little bit later. Still, should we start looking for a quarterback? Absolutely not. Kellen and Vic's fault for this game. No place to open receivers Why Jalen had to rub and no pressure to D-line. We're going to get to all of this. Dude, Barkley gets blamed? Of course, execution is part of it. Okay? Okay? This is what makes Joe Ho a dumbass. Seals, ain't you happy we fucking lost? We're going to lose our next two games. One and three coming. How you doing? I'm not happy about that. Why would I be happy about that? I want to cover a winner, not a loser. Joha, why would I be happy about that? Absolute ass bass thing, ass backwards thinking. That I would be praying for that. By the way, I, I, I can't wait to get into my takeaways here. Just brutal. How about this one, too? I got a stat here for you. And this is under Nick Siri. By the way, that's Sirianni's call. That's Sirianni's call at the end of the day. Okay? That's his call on whether or not to go for it or not. I mean, where's that number here? They've absolutely gagged football games. The last two minutes of the last six games, they've lost three of them. Let's get to the takeaways. I mean, that's on coaching and shitty players on defense. Shit players. Really. Did you see how he's sitting on the sideline when he thought he had another win? That defense was so terrible. Do you realize you have a bottom three defense right now? I've been telling you that the entire offseason. That that football team is constructed poorly. There's not a chance in hell you're a Super Bowl contending team. When, hey, let me say this to you. How many people, Xander, you too. How many people check this as a win on the Eagle schedule, beating the Falcons? It's an NFC team too, right? How many people, what would you say? 95, 97% of the people believe that the Eagles would win that game? Right? This was a game you thought you were going to blow out. Craig Thornton came on the program yesterday, said this won't be competitive. I was like, well, I, I didn't see it that way. How many people believe that you were going to win that game? And you thought pretty handily. Not so fast. 
By the way, will somebody please control Nick Sirianni on the sidelines? I mean, honest to God, running down the sidelines on Gardner Johnson, Gardner Johnson, once again, was absolutely hit or miss. He gives up a 46-yarder, has a nice play. How am I supposed to look at that? Say he's good? He gave up a 46-yard touchdown. And he, and he had a nice hit. Xander, the no holes defense train is broken down at 30th Street, out of business. Let's get to the takeaways. Then we'll get to the numbers. Minute 34 left in a football game. I blame Howie Roseman, number one, and most importantly, for constructing that awful defense. That's on him. A scheme? John McMullen's right. Think about this for a second. Think, I want you to think about what John McMullen said. And he said it again on Burt's 365. I'm sick and tired of people. Correct me if I'm wrong, Xander. I'm sick and tired of people blaming coaching. Well, John, are you going to blame the guy who constructed the defense that brought those players in? If you're not going to blame the coaches, John, are you going to blame Howie? If it's not coaches and it's players, those are shit players. Which is it? Old man Slay cooked. Yeah, and then he was sitting there fraternizing at the end of the game, blowing some guy from the Falcons. Xander, I missed the super chat behind Nick here, please. Okay? So, I mean, at the end of the day here, Howie Roseman, we said this all offseason. Has constructed this football team poorly. Let's get to Bryce Huff. Do you know how many hits on the quarterback Bryce Huff has in two games? The same number on his jersey. Zero. Goose egg. Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. With a second consecutive horrible night. Two horrible nights in a row. Jordan Davis, as of right now, is not living up to the 13th pick in the draft. Hey, Nick, when you're not scoring a lot of points, and you're not in a battle where you're scoring enough points, do me a favor. Kick the fucking field goals. This looks like 2023 all over again. Nothing's changed. How about our $50 million edge rusher? Huff is trash. What did I tell you about him? All off season, he had forty eight, no, four hundred and eighty reps as a jet. Do you know the majority of those ten sacks came in one fucking game? He was a liability on the field last night against the run. He was brutal. That wide receiver room, remember what I said yesterday. And when we had Xander on, Devontae Smith, Jahan Dotson, and Paris Campbell are not going to win that game. That's not frightening me. Sills and Flex warned y'all. Sills told us the Eagles were going 14-3. and three. I said you're going nine and eight. I never said anything about fucking 14 wins. That's a fucking lie. 
Who in the world ever thought that that team was a 14-win team and it ain't Dan Cilio? He drunk, guy. Get this. This guy says I'm a hater. No, I'm a fucking truth teller. That's what I am, dog. A truth teller. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. You guys are absolutely been great the last couple days. Wide receiver room stinks when AJ's not on the field. Stinks. Hey, I know that a lot of people think that AJ Brown, or excuse me, uh, Devontae Smith is the number one receiver, and he could be a number one receiver on another team. Um, in my opinion, no, he's not. He's not AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, or any of them guys. He's a really good player. I like the player. But every game almost that he's been in the game, his last two games, he's lost when AJ's not on the field. What did he step up to? And becomes predictable again. Let's do this. How many targets? You want to hear something about Jahan Dotson? He ran 25 pass routes. Last night. Do you know how many catches he had? I think he had one. Seals, thanks for your dose of reality. All day, apologists don't get the context. Offense must prioritize time of possession and keep the inept defense off the field. Any risk offense choices fail. Any risk, that's right. You gave an experienced quarterback time. And guess what he did? Kirk fucking Cousins beat you with a minute 34. With a minute 34, Kirk Cousins beat you. A guy who struggles in prime time. Really? All around terrible last night. We should have won by double digits. Dumb coaching, sluggish defense, sluggish. Stupid penalties. I can't believe I had hope. I text messaged Raheem and congratulated him. I'm happy for the man. He's a friend. Kept his poise. Kept his patience. I said, hey, man, what was the number one thing that you knew in that game last night that kept you guys in that thing? He goes, there's no way that they were not going to stop Kirk Cousins with two minutes left in the game. And you know what Cousins did? You know what he said? They targeted Quinion Mitchell, the rookie. Cousins went to the sidelines and targeted Mitchell. Sills, I swear, I'll never understand why we do not use Dallas Goddard. We'll get to him in a minute. Huff and Smith. Have till the bye week. Bench both. By the way, Super Chats, thank you. Vic Fangio brought no pressure. And when he did, he got burned on it. Then he never did it again. Gardner Johnson got burned when they brought pressure. So he never went back to it. He doesn't believe he has the personnel to do it. Gardner Johnson got burned on a 46-yard TD. And they never brought it again. Never brought it again. Hit the like button, please. The Kobe Dean can't cover shit. That's the best you have? Then you don't have. Dallas Goddard's overrated. Enough. Either you fucking can't use him, he's hurt. I mean, Jalen Hurts is a one-dimensional quarterback. One-dimensional. 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 Devontae, 26 yards with six catches to Covey meant nothing. 
meant nothing. Why play prevent defense with crappy corners that can't close, no pressure with the front four? Guys, I want to show you something in here. Do me a favor. Try to stay focused on what happened last night. Get mad at me in here? Some of you? What the fuck do I have to do with a colossal meltdown last night? And if no one thinks it's a colossal meltdown, I saw colossal meltdowns all last year. Nothing's changed. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me for being fucking right. Don't get mad at me. You get mad at me all you want. Your team's the one that laid an egg last night. Not me. Not me. I'm the one that didn't have shitty play calling. I'm not the one who didn't show up in critical situations. I'm not the one getting blown off the ball like Bryce Huff. I'm not the one who is getting murdered like Jordan Davis. Seals, can you please stop the NFL is like the WWE? It's about shock value, about upsets, to try to have parity in the league. Absolutely try to have parity in the league. That's why they have salary caps. That's why the draft is set up the way it is. Thanking Howie for the third rounder, Dotson. Hey, dude, holy shit. I see why Washington hated him. That guy is terrible. Cam Jurgens. I'm going to show you something here, Cam Jurgens. Try to help you out here. You know what that is? It's called the line of scrimmage. Learn it. Might help you. Defense getting a ton of blame, but at the end of the day, held them to 15 points before the last drive. This is on the offense. They have enough talent. Really? I didn't see any talent last night. I didn't see any talent. Did you? Where? Who was talented last night? Who was a talented player? Hey, one more time. Cam Jurgens. It's called the line of scrimmage. Learn it. Might help you, kid. Might help you. Say what you want about Chip Kelly. At least the teams didn't choke away games. Nick is always unprepared. Fuck this team. Um, I'm now a free agent fan. Bryce Huff is a complete liability on your football team. Completely. He is not capable of playing three down. You want a situational pass rush him, that's one thing. But if you want to play him as a three down guy, he is atrocious. No wonder Vic kept killing him the entire offseason. Killing him. Let me ask you something here also. He can't even situate. Hey, Xander's right. Xander will join us, by the way, co-host of Birds 365 at 332, as always. You're right. He can't even situational pass rush. 51 million bucks and 17.8 million for what? Thanks, Howie. Hate to say it, but Acho was right. We have a How Howie and Fangio issue. How we missed on our D line. Vic depends on rushing four. We need to make a move. Xander, I have one behind this one here. If you could post it too. Guys, please. Uh, all all super chats go to the top. I appreciate it here. Seals, I always thought you were just hating on the Eagles, but you were right the whole time. This Eagles team is not that good. Trash D line, and it's a trash D line we have. I I there we go. How he goes after names and not fit. Amen. By the way, Vic Fangio scheme. 
You knew what the fuck you did. Hey, I want you to think about something. How many years has Vic Fangio been in the NFL? If you're Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie. How many years? 45? You knew what he does. Why didn't you get the personnel to fit it? Why didn't you get the personnel to fit it? Remember what Dave wants that said on this show. You're not going to fail because of scheme. You're going to fail because the players aren't good enough. And that's exactly what I've been telling you. How he can't pick defensive guys. Now everyone around the country is picking it up. I've been saying it to you for four years. Sills last night's game put a spotlight on every issue this team has at the top of the list is lack of talent on D married to a DC who runs his system no matter what. It's a complete mismatch. Vets blew a gasket last night. Absolutely. Xander, I missed one after Abe. Thank you guys for the super chats. Please hit the like button. We appreciate it. Kimberly, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, let me ask you a question here. And I know some of you won't want to give Big Sills credit here for this, but remember I told you to draft B. John Robinson with the, what was it? The fifth pick or seventh pick, whatever it was. Then he moved up. Make sure you get Robinson. If you had to do it all over again, would you take B. John Robinson or would you take Jalen Carter? That kid is a ball player. Did you see him knock out Nolan Smith last night? I thought he knocked Nolan Smith's teeth out. Just on a chip block. That kid runs hard. He is a great football player. You'd rather have Carter, who has been a dud for 14 games, okay? I'll tell you something. That kid last night, and that offensive line for Atlanta dominated the Eagle front. Your two first-rounders were dominated. Dominated. Plain and simple. Dominated. Some people thought they'd have an advantage inside. They were dominated. 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 I told you the Falcons had one of the top five O-lines. Well, that was on display. No pressure and knocked your ass off the ball. Do you realize you've given up over 300 yards? in rushing the last two games. It's a microcosm of what happened the last 13 games last year. Nothing's been fixed. Penalties. Get to the numbers here in a minute. I mean, discipline. Where was it? Offensive guys downfield. Do you know what you're doing? Hurts became predictable again. One guy. Bullshitter to Covey. Couple things to Goddard. The rest of it was trying to get to Devontae Smith. And really, it was a lame offensive attack. Barkley was your guy. Bills, would you take Carter over Robinson? Probably not. Three days ago, I'd say never. Today, I'm saying probably not. You know, that B. John Robinson kid might lead the NFL in rushing. He, he might be a 2,000K guy, total yards this year. I don't know. Hurts playing hero ball at the end of the game. How he set us back due to ego. He treats people as replacement, replaceable. We know he shouldn't let certain people go. He always does. And we pay for it, especially on that side of the football. Especially on that side of the football. Guys, please hit the like button. I mean, 
I'm sorry, but the coaching was questionable. John McMullen wants to blame the players. Who fucking put the players on the roster? You're blaming incompetent players or lack of talent players on making plays. Now, Barkley's play? Absolutely. He dropped the ball. But when, you know what you do as a coach? Don't put a guy who drops the ball half the time in a position like that. Play the percentages. Do you know that that's the do you know that that's how New England operated their entire 24-year dynasty? They played percentages. For an organization that loves analytics, you surely got away from one. You surely got away from it. This right here is preposterous. Bringing Reddick back? Seth Joyner knows better than that. That means how he has to admit to a failure. He's not doing that. And he's not paying the guy and then realizing it, going to his owner going, I fucked up on Bryce Huff. Does that sound like a Howie Roseman move? Hey, Jeff, you know that $51 million I just gave to Bryce Huff? Hey, at the end of the day, you know what I'm going to do? We're going we're gonna to eat that, and then we're going to go pay another 70 to bring back Reddick. Really? You think that's what he does? Okay. What a stupid take that is by Seth Joyner. We're losing against the Saints and Bucks. Bill will end up as the head coach soon after. Piss poor coaching decisions last night. Xander, I missed the super chat after N91. Thank you guys again for these super chats. How he set us back duty ego. Okay, I got this one. Should have kept the hot hand. Run the damn ball. Q, amen. That's a stupid ass take by Joyner. He knows better than that. How he is not going to admit to a financial failure and a personnel failure all in one. Really? Wait a minute. I want to show you how dumb that Seth Joyner take is. He first has to admit that he fucked up on Nolan Smith to replace Reddick in the draft. Check. Then he's got to turn around and admit to Lori that he fucked up on Bryce Huff. Check. Then he's got to turn around and admit he first time he fucked up on Reddick. You think Howie Roseman's going to walk in to the owner of the Eagles and go, all these F marks, check marks that I failed in, I want you to bring them back for $75 million. I screwed up the draft. I screwed up Reddick. I screwed up Puff. Let's bring them back. Come on, man. Act like you know the Eagles. I've only been covering your team for four years, and I know better. What do you think he's on the sidelines for? He's going to take another victory lap like the Green Bay game. Instead, he got his ass kicked. Gonna make a take, at least make an educated one. Let's get to the numbers here. Guys, do me a favor, please hit the like list, like button, whatever. It's aggravating. Watching a football team. You know what sucks? You know, can I tell you why I'm mad? You know why I'm mad? Because they didn't address what they needed to. You addressed it with the – you thought you were going to fix your problems on defense with the draft and shit can guys and free agency. Saquon goes to Diddy parties. <laughs> that guy ain't doing well right now. That's for damn sure. It's aggravating. It is, Bill. By the way, that dynamic that they have in the building with Sirianni and the coaching and all that is so demeaning to every coach in the NFL and to any coach who coaches anywhere. I don't even know what the fuck he's doing there. We're going to go over his presser after the game. 
Even Hurts, you know, I thought Jalen wasn't awful. But Jesus Christ, what's that guy doing in the building? Hey, how's that preseason football working? First downs, 21 or 22-22. Okay. Jay, when will you have Mark Holmes on? One to bet. I don't know how much he's happy. He got his ass kicked too by New Orleans. How about this? New Orleans is the next opponent. And New Orleans just comes off beating the shit out of the Cowboys. And now next up is the Eagles. Can you imagine if New Orleans knocks out both Dallas and Philadelphia? You'd be talking about them as being one of the best teams in the NFC. Third down, Eagles weren't bad. Sticks to 13. They're licking their chops watching this game tape. Absolutely. 14 drives they've had this year in New Orleans. Scored on every one of them. Falcons 2-9. and nine. Here's another crazy thing. Eagles once again have more plays than the opponent. 68-58. to 58. And yet the Falcons had more total yards which means more yards per play, 385 to 365, passing 179, Cousins, 233, a ton of it came in that last drive, obviously, rushing attempts, Birds 37, okay, Falcons 28, Falcons, get this. You want to hear something crazy? The last two games, the Eagles have given up six and a half yards a rush against Green Bay, five and a half yards per rush against the Falcons. Where are your D tackles? You can't set the edge. 99. They say players take on the personality of the head coach. Play. They're playing like trash for a competitive advantage. Can't let teams know they can be good. That's right. Kept them in the ball game. I told you Atlanta wanted to make that 99. Atlanta wanted to make that a fourth quarter game. There is a good question. Sills, how does Davis and Carter out of shape as professionals? Great question. What's the accountability for them fat asses? We got to make it at least two and two. Two and two. Well, that's what I had you, two and two by the bye week. I had you two and two. You're losing either the Bucks or Saints. You might lose to both. Can you imagine if the Eagles are one and what is it, three? Heading into the bye. Penalties, nine for 53. Try to be disciplined. Falcons, three, of, three for 40 yards. Look at the time of possession you had. You had the ball 36 minutes to 24 minutes with the Falcons. And they beat you. Shit. If it wasn't for the shit field position they had in the first half, I think they'd have beat you by 10. Here's the milk carton, guys. Guys, do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Give me a heads up on where we are on the likes right now. Love to hear it. We're going to get to all these questions, Spin, and we're going to get to you guys here in a minute and your complaints about last night. I'm just going to give you my takeaways, okay? And then we'll get to your take, and then we'll get to your comments and complaints. 145, guys, let's see if we get to 200 by the top of the hour. Thank you, Brian. Milk cart number one, missing person. We're going to send out an eagle alert. These are players that. Like an Amber Alert. Call 
Howie Roseman over at the Novacare Center because we haven't seen this person and we're a little bit nervous. And hopefully somebody has spotted him. Bryce Huff is fucking terrible. There's no two ways about it. Jordan Davis was terrible. There's no two ways about it. Nolan Smith is a bust. Jahan Dotson is a waste of a third-round pick. Jalen Carter, man, please don't disappoint me. Please don't disappoint me. I'm not there yet, but boy, I'm getting there. Hey, Reed Blankenship, what I would do if I were you, I would get that tape from the Green Bay game and carry it in my cell phone for the rest of my NFL career. Because how well you played in that Green Bay game, you blew out loud. In the Falcon game. You want to show your kids that tape. Because the game you played last night, you were atrocious. Dude, wide receiver three. Eagles play with 10 versus 11 every game. And Dallas Goddard, it's time to move on from him. I'm finished. He's overrated. He's overrated and underused. Why you're paying $15 million to that guy? But then again, you got a bunch of guys on that football team. I would never pay Gardner Johnson $8 million. I would never. By the way, Barkley deserves it. Barkley deserves it. Gardner Johnson? No way. No way in the world. Am I paying that guy? Eight million bucks. Dude gave up a 46-yard touchdown because he was out of fucking position again. Oh, but him and Sirianni were sucking face down on the sidelines. And Nick goes past the 20. I'm surprised the refs didn't call a penalty on that because that is a penalty going past the 20, and there he is down there, grab ass. Dude, that guy is so immature as a coach. It is mind-numbing how poor of a character coach he is. Let's get to the players. Cousins, 20-29, 20 241, two touchdowns. Quarterback rating. 117.2. For a guy with a bad Achilles, you brought no pressure, really. Jalen Hurts, 23 of 30, 183, 88.6. 13 carries, 85 yards, one touchdown. My assessment on Hurts is night. Um, he was okay. I saw 22 for the first time. He had to play 22. He wasn't going to win throwing the ball. One more time to you guys. That quarterback is not good enough to win you games from the pocket. Stop pretending that he is. When Hurts runs and throws, he can beat you. But to think that that guy is a pocket passer and the only way that guy is a good player is when A.J. Brown is on the field in the passing game. And when he's not on the field, he's average at best. Deal with it. He's average. Average at best. When he runs around like that and he gives you glimpses of 22, that's the Jalen Hurts that's going to strike fear. When he runs like that, Jalen Hurts last night played a good game with his wheels, not his arm. 
There were still missed throws last night. Barkley was great. Saquon Barkley has been more than advertised to me. Hey, Dio, we're going to get to all your takes. I promise you here in a second. I know you guys. I see you guys posting. I promise as soon as I get done here. I would never let you not vent. Bijan, 14 carries, 97 yards, 25 yards through the air with four catches. This guy's a fucking ball player. He is really tough. I didn't realize because I thought, again, I watched him at Texas. I knew he was good, but I didn't know he was that good. He's a great looking player. Barkley is as advertised. 22 carries, 95 yards, tough runner. Massive workload in the first two weeks of the season. I mean, I thought he was sensational again last night. Drop pass, obviously, will dent that performance last night. Devontae Smith, seven catches, 76 yards, 10 yards a catch. Okay, I mean, I guess. Covey, six catches for 23 yards. I mean, what the hell is that, actually? What is that, five, six yards a catch? What's that in the impact of a game? Nothing. Like check down city. RPO throws. That's a non-impact stat line. You could erase that. It wouldn't have been anything... Hey, you really like throwing to Covey six catches for 23 yards? What were you doing, playing catch with him? Drake London, 54, and he was – get this. I said that guy wouldn't beat you. Well, he did in the end. Dude, what was Slay thinking in the corner back there? You know what Slay was doing? He was watching the quarterback and not watching the football in his keys, and he got beat. Actually, he got smoked. Who's Darnell Mooney? Who the fuck is that? Darnell Mooney owned the secondary all night? This guy's not even an elite wide receiver. Who's Darnell Mooney? Honestly, who's Darnell Mooney? I'd never heard of him. Darnell Mooney? You wanted more check down sales. Yeah. When AJ's on the field. Yes. Okay. There's nothing wrong with check downs. That game was really not on Hurts. That game was on situational play calling. The ability of him to run kept Jalen's ability to run kept you in that game last night. And nothing to do with check downs. Britton Covey, he's now, get this, you're throwing to not, well, then again, you didn't, well, you didn't have enough money out there. So you threw not to the money guy, got her, but you threw to Britton Covey. Think about that for a minute. You got a $15 million tight end. How many catches did uh, Goddard have last night in the game? How many, ki- how many catches did he have versus Britton Covey? who's like a special teams guy. How many catches did, did, did Goddard have? He had three catches. So Britton Covey had more catches than a $15 million ball player. Throw to the money. We'll get to Sirianni's bullshit and Hertz's bullshit here in a minute. But I want to take some of your thoughts. And some of your complaints from last night. Um, Mooney was drafted by Chicago. Okay, I remember now. Dan Silio, do you think we can make a trade for a DE to help the run defense? 
who in the Panthers or Giants do you think we can get? This stuff should have been addressed in the offseason. You're going to try to paper mache it again. Seals, I had not seen Kellen Moore on the sidelines. I would have thought Brian Johnson had the clipboard. No personnel on defensive line to accommodate a proper defense for pressure. Absolutely true. You guys thought you were going to put a performance like the Steelers did against Atlanta? Remember I kept telling you? You're high if you think you're in the room with the Steelers as a defensive football team. You're a bottom five team. That's a bottom five defense. Bottom five. I've been telling you this. That's a bottom five defense. So many opportunities to put it away, but this team can't get out of its own way. Never seen a team snatch defeat from the draws of victory like they do. Hey, Crank, actually, you watched it last year, how a football team was shooting itself in the foot all year. You watched it all last year. Think about this. One more time. That's a game you check to win. You check that to win. So I'm not going to doubt you anymore. Jalen's below average. I didn't say below average. When he plays like that last night, I want you to listen to me carefully. He's a really good ball player. But is that good enough to win? Here, how about this? If Jalen plays like that against the New Orleans Saints this weekend, he'll lose. Plain and simple. Is that good enough to win a Super Bowl? We will never win a Super Bowl with Sirianni. It's very true. The Georgia boys and Huff are a disgrace. We're in for a long season. No leadership. And the owner wants this. The, Anthony, I do not believe the owner wants this. I think the owner thinks he knows better. Okay? I think he thinks he, he knows better than you. Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie are not football people. They work in the business. Howie Roseman is a glorified public accountant. He's a glorified CPA who can't pick defensive talent to save his ass. Name me one player you're happy with that he's drafted defensively in the last five years. Name me one. One. Quinion Mitchell looks like it. That's this year. And there's still time to assess his game. How he has to allow Pickett to compete. No way. Not, dude, the season is over then if you start that conversation. Okay? It's over. Name me one kid from Georgia you're happy with. Since it's concerning the drop-off with Hurts when AJ's not there. You think? Jalen Hurts doesn't elevate other players when A.J. Brown's not on the field. That's evident. He does not elevate other players. Who? Did he elevate anybody in the playoff game? Did he elevate anybody in the Falcon game last night? Just asking. So as I disagree on Hurts, he floats passes. I never said he was a good pocket passer. He's laid on passes. We know this. Too focused on AJ. Absolutely. Can't go through progressions. No question. He's broken. Never to be 2022 again. Well, that's the best he's looked, probably. That, that game last night was probably the best he's played for four quarters in a year and in two games. That's the best it's going to get. 
Now, you put AJ on there, that dynamic changes. By the way, word is he could maybe miss two games coming up here. He might miss the Saints and the Bucks. Can you imagine losing two, or excuse me, three NFC games, Falcons, Saints, and Bucks? All three teams fighting for playoff spots now. You imagine that? I mean, you may not have him for the Saints and Bucks game. Who's picking up the mail? Seals, do you think a player like Sue could help and save our D line? You need to get a run stopper in there. You need you need to get some run stopping dudes in there. You can't stop the run. Do you understand something about not being able to stop the run? It's like having your hand tied behind your back. You're getting your face kicked in, and you can't do nothing about it. You can't do anything about it. Okay, look at this dumbass take here. Um, this guy thinks this is a two week issue. This has gone on for the last three months of football with that organization. You're trying to tell me you think that football team, that defensive team, is any different than last year's team after week 12? It looks like the same football team. How in the world? That's not a small sample size. Week two? Get this. That guy C24 just said, it's only week two. How many people in here think that your defense is going to get better and be a top 15 defense by week 12? Help me out on this. Help me out on this. What did you see last night that made you feel better about your defense? Give me one. Pathetic. Dude, you're not drafted a quarterback. You're into that guy for huge bags of money. You know what? Here, Dio's right. Hey, it's only week two. It's only week three. It's only week four. It's only week five. It's only... That sounds like a broken record of a year ago. I was the only one telling you you sucked at 10 and 1. You didn't believe it. This is what the team is. Could hurt start for any other contender. Is there anybody on the defense who'd start on another contender? It's scary. I'm trying to think. You think anybody on the Eagle D line or Eagle defense could start in Kansas City? Do you? I don't. There's not one player on your defense that could start in Kansas City. Not one. And you got three first-rounders on it. It all started in the offseason, 22-23 with Howie. Yeah. You, you thought it was more important to extend the two receivers and build a team from the perimeter instead of building your defense back up again. Now, is that from the owner? Probably. We'll get Angelo Cataldi in at 5.30 Eastern. Sills, what week does Nick get fired? Absolutely no way. Senor, he ain't getting fired. Not a chance in hell. He's the perfect puppet. This guy's Geppetto. He's Geppetto. Let me get to Sirianni's bullshit. But I thought Howie's a genius. Hey, let me ask you something there. Tone, I know you're being facetious here. Tone, name me the one move on defense you're happy with. In the last three years, are you happy with 
letting TJ Edwards go? Skinny, you happy letting Kaiser White go? You want to hear something crazy? Screw TJ Edwards. You haven't even replaced Kaiser White yet. You haven't even replaced that guy. Tell you what, Arizona looks good. And he's on that ball team. And they beat the tar out of the Rams. Hey, do you think any of those defensive tackles are playing as good as Javon Hardgrave did? I'm not saying you paid a guy $20 million, but has anybody lived up to that expectation? I'd rather we do bad early and be realistic, though, instead of like last year. Hopefully, it forces some changes. I can't give up hope. That's a great take, though. Preddy, that's that's a great take. You're right. But remember something. It's a great observation, actually. Look, if you suck right now and you get out of this into the buy of two and two, I think that's okay. That's okay. If you're two and two heading into the buy, that's all right. I'll tell you why. That means you're surviving. That means you're trying to get better. And God willing, you're better by November and December. Like Kansas City was a year ago. Dude, that defense is a year and a half away from being decent. Not good. Decent. 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 What a conversation this was this morning, and I'm going to leave it private. I don't want to undress Clint. I can't, and I'm not. He asked me not to, and I'm not. These are my opinions. I want to make it clear. I said this to him. Dude, those two guys could never play at UM. Not with Cortez and Sapp and Jerome and them guys. Full Fork and them guys. Never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Those guys are Hall of Famers. Never happened. Today's my birthday, but. Wanted to say we are not a contender at the moment. Happy birthday, brother. Our D-line is non-existent and has too much put into it for no production. Gardner Johnson getting paid to miss uh, TD tackles. I sw- I, I'm, I'm with you. Here's Andrew. Thank you for the super chats, by the way. Guys, give me a number on the uh, likes so far. I appreciate if you can give me an update. Cilio, do you think if we lose three in a row, Kellen Moore will be forced to revert Hurts to his 22 form? I think they were forced to do that last night without AJ. Can you imagine this? Tell me if you guys, and Xander's going to join us at the bottom of the hour. But guys, tell me if you thought you felt this. That when AJ wasn't on the field, the game plan that they went to on Sunday night, well, let him just play like 22. They kind of just went, well, let's play like 22. Because that's what it looked like. One target, running hurts. The difference was you had Barkley running the ball. Didn't it look like they just went like this? Well, let's just have him play like he did when we gave him the bag of money. And you were like this. You know what? I was watching the game. I started saying this. Oh, there's Jalen. Holy shit. Like Rip Van Winkle. There he is. I can't believe it. I haven't seen him in a year and a half. Great question. I think the better question, though, 
is this. Why so many meaningless plays to Covey? Why so many meaningless plays? Kathy, penalties were stupid. How many pre-snap shit? And once again, some of you who just came in, I want to I want to make sure we do this because um Cam Jurgens, that's called the line of scrimmage. Learn it. Learn what a line of scrimmage is. I don't mind the money we're paying Hurts. I'm salty about him getting too many, the no trade clause in his contract. Dude, Jalen is good enough to win games. What you saw with Hurts is what he is. He's better with players around him. He doesn't make players better around him. He doesn't. That's not what he does. 180 yards passing, 70 yards rushing. That's what it is. That's his ceiling. But you know when he looks better? When A.J. Brown's on the field. When you take A.J. Brown off the field, can you imagine if you took A.J. What if Devontae Smith got hurt? Would, would this be fair to say, if Devontae Smith gets hurt, you're a six-win team? Is that fair? Jesus, criminy. You look like a nine-win team now without him, AJ. If you if, if you took Devontae off and you rolled out Jahan Dotson, Paris Campbell, and Britton Covey, that's a six-win team. No, no, no. Here. No, no. Yell's wrong. Doesn't apply to all teams. Josh Allen has nobody. He's 2-0. No turnovers. Doesn't apply to Kansas City. That's no bearing on those teams. You, do you understand? They're 2-0, and Allen has no turnovers. I can't name you a wide receiver in Kansas City. And they're not even playing well. Let's get to Nick. Guys, keep them coming. You guys are great. Thank you for the super chats. Damn, Sills, we're in trouble. Jalen ain't the guy. Um, to, He's too damn cool. He got his bread, got his endorsements, and now he doesn't care. That's not true. If Carson had these weapons, um, it would be a wrap. Wentz was twice the quarterback. I, I disagree with that. I, 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 hey, Furman, I appreciate that, but I disagree with that. Okay. I never, ever thought Jalen was going to be anything better than what you saw last night. And the only way he's going to be better if at the Eagles, and this is why they spent $200 million on the offense, is because of exactly last night. He's not going to lead you. Dude, it's the Falcons. Let's not. Let's not sit here and pretend the Atlanta Falcons are world beaters. The Atlanta Falcons really with a 35-year-old immovable quarterback who can't move to save his life. You think that's a contender? For what? You know, people on the national level are saying Atlanta's better than Philly. Atlanta's better than Philly. You're in trouble. That's Atlanta. We're, we're, we're not talking about the 49ers here. It's the Atlanta. Hey, do me a favor. Will somebody do I, – I didn't write this number down. What was Kirk Cousins' completion percentage last night 
against the vaunted no holes Swiss cheese defense of the Eagles. What was what was his completion percentage last night? Shooter goes, Atlanta's pretty good. They'll make the playoffs. Pretty good. They'll make the playoffs. Okay. I don't think anybody's sitting here saying they're getting to the Super Bowl. Here, 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 here's what aggravates me, especially about that John McMullen take. If Saquon catches the ball, the conversation is entirely different. Reality, let's have a conversation on it. If he catches the ball, this is a reality league, not ifs, ands, or buts. The Ravens should be what? 2-0. and The Steelers are undefeated. Okay? They're, unde they're undefeated. Certain things should be a certain way. But this is a results league. That's what the NFL is. It's results. Here's Nick. Um, I'm going to hang in there for a second. Hey, Sills, 32nd in league at yards per play given up on. Look at this. Holy cow. This is embarrassing. That's embarrassing. The Eagles are the worst team in the league in the first two weeks, half the quarter pole of the first half of the season. They're the worst defense per play in the league. Remember what Xander said about um, playing the young guys? Can't get any worse. It is. It is worse. You get the worst defense in pro football right now. Carolina's in this league. You're worse than Carolina? Man, I didn't think you'd be that low. The worst football team at the start of the season. And you got some people in here going, hey, it's only week two. I mean, you're not even in the middle of the pack. I don't know what the reasoning was that Isaiah didn't play. Okay. They, well, I know this. The Falcons, they targeted Quinion Mitchell in the final drive. That's what I was told. They targeted him. Now, the scheme didn't help him. Okay? The, the, the scheme didn't help him playing that far off the football. If they truly wanted to win, they would have ran two tush pushes to gain three yards. Easy win. Victor. Okay? Again, third minute. I'm here. Let me let me show you this. Let me show you this number here. Get this. This is mind numbing. Falcons had zero point seven percent chance of winning that game last night, with a minute fifty six left. It was the seventh most improbable comeback win. In the NFL since 2016. The chances of the Falcons winning that game was like a billion to one. Players and coaching. John's right on half. Players. Howie Roseman, too. Okay, John, if it's not the players, then it's got to be the GM for putting shit talent on the defense and relying on youth. Isn't it, hey, isn't this what I've been telling you? You're relying on poor talent and youth. This isn't Cooper DeGene. This isn't 
Um, Quinion Mitchell issues. Those guys are going to be okay. The problem comes down to you missed on Smith. You missed on Huff. You missed on Davis. Carter yet to be determined. But you missed on those players. You missed on Dean. Shit, you know what? I'll take that back for a second. Nicobe's probably playing better than any of the Georgia guys right now. You hear me say that? Kind of wild, isn't it? Not that I think any of them are playing good. Here, get this. Since the Buffalo game. Since the Buffalo game. I want to give you some Jalen Hurts stats. 22 Eagles were either blowing their teams out or in close games. When we ran the ball, we kept it away from Hurts' mistakes. The last two years exposed Jalen Hurts. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Absolutely awesome take. Guys, please hit the like button. Jalen Hurts, since Buffalo, Eagles are 2-7. and seven. Passing, Hurts is 178. For 279 yards, 63.8% completion percentage. 1872 in passing yards, nine TDs, eight interceptions. Rushing, 70, 70 attempts, 318, four and a half yards of carry. Five touchdowns, five fumbles. What? Two lost. So, since the Buffalo game, Hertz has 14 combined touchdowns and 11 total turnovers. What are we talking about? What are, what are, what are we talking about? Did you hear those numbers? Since the Buffalo game, he's been terrible. Terrible. Predictable. Two things you don't want to be in the NFL. Terrible and predictable. Defense wins Super Bowls. They can defend the score. Yeah, but Abe, you can't defend turnovers. Three picks in two weeks. Hey, you want to rip Trevor Lawrence? Sure. I get it. Well, Hurts is in that room, too. You know why? They're both $50 million guys. I don't give a shit where they were drafted now. You, you're you up in that number, $50 million? <laughs> This guy playing like a $50 million. This guy is not a franchise quarterback with these numbers. And two and seven since Buffalo. He is not a fran He's not playing franchise football. Am I wrong? This is a trend now. This is not one or two games. This is a trend. Okay? This is a trend. Okay? This is a trend. Jonathan Gannon ran Fangio's system better than him. I'll take him back. Robinson was running through holes that Dan could fit through. Not a guy in sight. Absolutely. I'll tell you something about you guys here today. I give you credit. Okay? You know, we, we, we jockey back and forth and have fun here but I think all of you are realizing what you're seeing here. Besides the pick, Jalen was awesome. Jalen was awesome. Newsflash. Any, any good he did before was negated with the pick. Uh, Brian, Hertz, apolo Hertz apologists blow me. Brian, the pick, in my opinion, shows the panic and the hero ball 
that he has in him. Like, get this. Do you know what the one thing Tom Brady, he completely jaded my opinion on? Sills, is it me or, or the quarterback play around the league has become mediocre? Yes. Yes. Coordinators caught him. That's why scoring was down a year ago. Do me a favor. Brady played situational football all the time. You know why? It was fucking boring. Who was the most imp- – hey, guys, who was the most important player in Tom Brady's career in the first 12 years? Can you tell me? You want to trend sales? Analytics? Letting that determine the game plan is stupid. Got you, Q. Who was the one player in the first 12 years? There you go, Chris. There you go. Where's Chris? Vinatieri. He used half the field. Got a Hall of Fame place kicker in position to win Super Bowls and AFC championships. Adam Vinatieri kicked more game winners in critical situations than any kicker I've ever seen. Remember when Madden kept going, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Brady put him in a position for a 54-yard field goal to win the Super Bowl and beat the Rams. You mean to tell me you're not going to put Jake Elliott in a position to throw the ball 14 yards and give him a shot at a 58-yard field goal where he's made a 61-yarder? I'll tell you what, I feel better about Jake Elliott kicking a 58-60 to yarder and having an attempt at that at home then I do Jalen Hurts throwing a Hail Mary up. That was a desperation throw. You didn't need it. You had time and a timeout left. That's not thinking it through. That's not playing situational football. You can't just come unraveled like that. That's the difference between Mahomes and Hurts right there. Mahomes is not throwing that ball down the field. He's going to put that kid like he did this last week against Cincinnati to win it with time expiring. He took a page right out of Brady. There lies the difference between Mahomes, Brady, and Hurts. The kicker in Kansas City is just as good as the guy in Philly. But the quarterback puts him in position to win games. Jalen Hurts was supposed to be a game manager and conservative guy. He gets paid and thinks thinks he's Dan Marino. Then we need a real quarterback. I agree, Sills. That's not situational football like Sirianni preaches. That shit. And we go out and never show it. <laughs> okay, look at this. Joe Burrow gave up that game and chase with the penalty. You know what's funny about that, Q? How come you don't see those great teams? Making those mistakes late in ball games, crossing the line of scrimmage, having positive yardage plays being brought back when it's critical times to win games. You don't see a scoop or a fumble late in football games when you're watching those two guys play or guys that know how to win those crucial games. You know, it, it's not luck, it's playing the percentages. John's looking at the micro going, McMullen. He goes, all he has to do is catch it. I'm not going to put the ball in that position to be caught. I'm going to take the time off. The number, what was more important? Gambling at the guy would catch it? He probably catches it 9 out of 10. Not him. Since he's been in the league, he's got more drop footballs than any running back in pro football. You should know that. You should know that. Do you know that? 
Barkley has more drop footballs than any running back since he's been drafted. You should know that. And the one critical thing that you can't do in that moment is stop the clock. Atlanta had no timeouts. That game was over. That game was over. You know what you could have theoretically have done? Think about what you could have done. Xander, correct me if I'm wrong. They had a timeout left, right? They could have ran the ball on third down. And then did what? They could have snapped the ball on fourth down. Right? Or they could have snapped it, took a knee, let it run down. Atlanta had no timeouts. They could have burned another 40 or 25 off the clock. Take the penalty, kick a 30-yard field goal to put more points on the board. The worst what you do is you took 60 minutes off the clock. What were you thinking? How about this? Akbar goes, Sills, would you have went for it on fourth down after Barkley dropped the ball? Um, no. Okay, but how were they going to st- – get this. If you run it on third down, if you run it on third down, think of this. Akbar, if you run it on third down, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, Big Seal CTE. If you run the ball, Atlanta had no timeouts. You line up in fourth down. You ran the ball. The clock's still running. Clock doesn't stop. They had no timeouts. Could have took another 25 seconds, 23 seconds off the clock. Take a timeout, kick it on fourth down. And help me out here. What's the one thing that Jalen Hurts or uh, Saquon Barkley does best? Catching the ball or running the ball? He ru- he's a better runner. Do you understand what I said? It's third and three. They turn and hand it instead of throwing that pass to stop the clock. Clock's running. How can Atlanta stop it? You line up for fourth down. It's fourth down. That clock, they start the play clock. Who's looking up? 23, 20, 21, 22. He took another 23 seconds off the clock. Timeout, kick it. You make them have to go the length of the field with 52 seconds left. Sills, why did we not use our tight ends toward the end of the game? The Falcons couldn't stop them. And on top of that, we ain't even running the ball. Barkley's doing great. All right, Sills, I think we all agree with you now. Eagles are so bad, we can't put the team on track to play better and not implode. Nothing. Coaches are stuck in their ways. I think the organizations are the organization is stuck in their ways. Do you understand? Like last night, I didn't bring this up, and I wish I did with John. Third and three. You don't throw it. You run it. Clock's still moving. You line up for fourth down. They start the new play clock. There goes 23 seconds more off the clock. Call timeout. You kick it. What are you thinking? Or are you not thinking? That's on Nick. Barkley's got it. Dude, my enemy 
is not Barkley catching that pass. My enemy is the clock. The lack of pressure on Cousins. That's my problem. So let's call him Jalen Wentz. Better yet, Jalen Winston. The guy is a freaking turnover machine that doesn't elevate his guys. Highest paid, by the way. Look, Jalen Hurts played good last night. But that's Jalen Hurts. That's not good enough. He plays like that against New Orleans, he'll get beat. He'll get beat. Did Sills talk about Nick's press conference yet? No, I'll get to that after we talk to our friend. And tell you what, I, I love what we do here because John and I have a different opinion of how that game ended. My enemy was the clock. And the number, the number one cardinal sin that you couldn't have was the clock stopping. And how was that? The win, the win lose um gamble there wasn't worth it. I'm trying to get that clock down. 49er fans here, but I enjoy your content. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Just shows you, too, everybody in the NFC. You had a shot at really kind of putting yourself ahead a little bit here. But now you're in the room here. Who would have thought after week one that Minnesota Vikings and the Saints are teams you're talking about in the NFC right now? Let's go to the co-host of Birds 365 and also the pre- and post-game show, which were awesome last night. Thank you, guys. Um, Xander Krause here. Xander. Um, You've had 24 hours now to think about all the things that went on in that game last night. What was the most disturbing thing to you last night and the takeaways for you from that game? Yeah, 20, almost 24 hours removed. I think the big, the most disturbing thing to me is the defense because you talk about, you know, the, I talked about the Jalen Hurts interception that drove me up a wall. I was on Jalen Hurts in the morning uh, on Birds 365 about it. We talk about the bad coaching decision. We talk about